Hello, my strong, strong friends. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys eight mistakes that you definitely want to avoid. Maybe these are eight things that you didn't know you needed to look out for. This video is going to be especially good for anyone who's interested in the lifting aspect of fitness or getting into the gym and learning more about what really to do and how to navigate that. If you're new here, my name is Meg, also known as Meg Squats. You get it? Cause I, <clears throat> I squat a lot and I'm a strength and fitness coach. So I make videos here on YouTube, mostly about the strength aspect, the strength side of fitness. So if that's something that you're interested in, then please do subscribe to my channel. I post videos every Friday. And if you guys like this one or want more kind of beginner lifter journey videos, please do give the video a like so that I know. It definitely helps out the channel and it lets me know which ones are performing well, AKA which ones you guys wanna see. Hey you guys, I wanna take a minute just to thank today's sponsor. So thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring the video that you're watching now. I know you guys have probably heard me talk about HelloFresh before. I really love it because it helps me focus on my goals and focus on enjoying my meals. So I don't have to do the meal planning, the prepping, or the shopping. HelloFresh delivers all of the fresh, pre-measured ingredients and puts them together in easy six step pictured recipe cards so I can personally spend less time doing the boring stuff and more time enjoying myself in the kitchen. The meals are also amazing. They all taste amazing. It can help you get out of like a recipe rut. I know I can find myself eating the same exact things every single day. So HelloFresh is a great option to switch things up and teach yourself how to cook something new because I am not the most experienced in the kitchen, but definitely with getting HelloFresh, I have learned so much and understood how to pair things together in a easy way and a fun way. Meals are now from $6.99 per serving and if you go to hellofresh.com, you can get started with eight free meals. That's $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. Just go to hellofresh.com and enter my code MAKESQUATS80. So thanks again to our sponsor for making this video possible for you guys to watch and let's get back to the video. All right, so let's just jump into the first one. The first one that you do want to consider is to find your why before you even step into the gym. Make sure that you know exactly why you're there. I know that might seem like an easy question to answer, so I do want you to think a little bit deeper and try this exercise called the five whys. So I'm going to ask you why do you want to go to the gym in the first place? And maybe you say, because I wanna look, I wanna get fit. And then I'm going to ask you again, why? And I'm gonna ask you that five times total. So really this exercise is going to give you perspective on your true intrinsic goal and the true reason why you want to be there, why you wanna change your life, why you wanna go on this fitness journey. It'll be especially helpful for you to understand what is important to you and also give you an idea on maybe if you're doing this for someone else or if this isn't something that you really want to be doing. So to go back to my example of my five whys and yes, this will be the example that I would have used. These are the answers that I would have given when I first started getting into the gym. So my number one why, the answer to the first why would be I want to get in the gym because I want to get fit. That would be my initial response. And why do I want to get fit? Well, I want to get fit because I want a better body. Why do I want a better body? I want a better body because I want to look better when I'm on the beach. Duh. Why do I want that? Well, because I never felt really confident when I was in certain social situations or when I was at parties. I never felt like I was really happy or comfortable or confident in my own body. So I feel like a fitness journey would help me get there and give me that confidence that I really want to experience and I want to have so that I can enjoy other parts of my life. 
why. So you can see how it started as I want to get fit doesn't really sound like a really motivating thing to something actually important to me, something that will continue to drive my progress and my journey so that we're seeking for longevity here. Of course, this is going to go in many different ways. Maybe you want to get fit because your doctor told you that you need to establish some sort of fitness routine. So that can get really deep and you can see how this exercise can really grow and help you learn something about yourself so that you're not just going to the gym for some goal that really isn't your true goal or your true why. So I know that first one maybe was a little woo-woo. These will get more strength-based and technical as we go on. So the second one is gonna be a little bit different. The second thing that I see most lifters, myself included, avoid or miss this step is exhausting their linear progression or not following a systematic progression at all. More often than not, people who are just starting their fitness journey, if they choose to go the route of starting themselves, which most people can't afford a personal trainer, that makes sense, it's pretty expensive. Most people just go in the gym and choose a handful of exercises and do them and then go home. But you actually want to make sure that you are exhausting some sort of progression. You're adding more and more weight on the bar each session or each week or adding more reps or adding more sets, adding more tonnage or volume. You wanna make sure that you're doing this because you are then incorporating the concept of progressive overload. You're then giving yourself an opportunity to acquire more skills and also managing your stress and the stress that you're putting on your body in a systematic way so get on a program start with some sort of linear program and you can find them for free on the internet I'll put some helpful links down in the description down below and once you start to exhaust that linear progression that's when you start to become a less novice or maybe a novice plus lifter Building on the second one, my third suggestion or third mistake that you want to avoid is not following a program at all. You can kind of do a linear progression with any movement. So you could just do more push-ups than you did the day before, and that would be incorporating some sort of progression into your daily workout. Now, a systematic program is definitely something that you wanna look at once you've made the habit of going to the gym more consistent. And let me tell you, that program will keep you motivated to come back to the gym. So if you are having trouble with just getting there, a program and knowing that you do have a plan definitely might be something that will get you in the door in the first place. My fourth tip is to avoid prioritizing isolation movements over bigger compound movements. For example, you as a lifter will get more out of a bench press than you would an isolated pec fly or you would get more out of a squat than a leg extension. Even though those are great movements and there are definitely a time and place for them, if you go into the gym and you only have a few minutes, I would suggest you focusing on more compound movements. So these are things like squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press. These kind of movements are easier to overload. They'll help build your skills in a more diverse and more athletic manner. And usually these movements can be done at higher intensities, meaning that you can use more weight, so they're harder on your body, meaning that you get more bang for your buck. My fifth tip is a little more advanced, but this is something that novice lifters might experience, and that is working off of a true one rep max on a program. So whenever you're asked by a coach or a program to work off of a percentage of a one rep max, usually it's not a true one rep max. Maybe this is something that more advanced lifters would experience, but it is definitely a mistake to not figure out a training max or a daily minimum and work off of that. The reason for that being is that working off of a training max can ensure that you're moving forward on your best day and your worst day. It's really hard to program off of a peaked one rep max because it probably took you special conditions to get there. And those conditions aren't something that you're going to experience in the middle of a training block, in the middle of a training cycle. This sixth tip is something that took me way too long to figure out. And that is avoiding gastrointestinal distress before my workout. Wow, if I, I could 
like vividly remember sessions where I just couldn't do anything because I just ate the wrong thing during my workout. It is not a pretty sight, it is not enjoyable at all. So I recommend figuring out things that work for you. Of course you want to avoid anything that individually upsets your stomach. Some of us are lactose intolerant. Some of us are lactose sensitive. You know who you are. My, I'm, I can see myself in the viewfinder, so I'm looking at myself. Recommendations on what to look forward to eat is something that is high glycemic and fast digesting in regards to carbohydrates. You probably want a little bit of protein in there. And honestly, I would recommend avoiding fat. Not that you need to completely avoid it, but don't search for high fat pre-workout meals. Some people would disagree with that, but those calories are just slower digesting, meaning that they're gonna sit in your stomach for longer, and you do want the energy that you're going to get from carbohydrates, for example, to quickly digest so that you can use it for your workout. I'd also recommend staying clear of fiber. High fiber foods are not gonna work well with your tummy. Things like Quest Bars, holy crap, did I not know that Quest Bars weren't supposed to be a pre-workout meal. Don't do what I did. <laughs> and also you might find it more helpful to avoid higher volume foods or higher volume vegetables. This seventh one is less for you and more for other people. I know whenever I was a novice plus lifter, this is right around the time that I finished the road to 300, I was really strong and I was doing well on my own personal journey. And I was sharing videos on YouTube here. I thought that I knew everything. Just because you may be at a more advanced strength level doesn't necessarily mean that you are at a or an advanced lifter level at all. When you're at this novice plus stage, you're usually at your most eager and ambitious stage of your fitness journey, which is really exciting. I don't want to take that away from anybody, but I do want to caution that sometimes this can go to your head. Usually people who are giving form advice on the internet that is unsolicited or in the gym are this novice plus area, eager lifters who maybe do mean the best and do want to help out. Usually those are the people who are trying to give advice to people who didn't ask for that advice in the first place. Even if you have the best, the best intentions and the sweetest demeanor, I do not recommend finding someone at the gym who's doing something wrong and going to them and suggesting how to do it right. This is a really uncomfortable situation for most people and even if their form looks like shit, I still recommend against it. The reason being is at this novice plus stage, you usually only have your own experience to work off of and reference. People might be doing an exercise differently, they might be doing it wrong in your eyes, but they might be accommodating for an injury, they might be trying something else or trying something new to see if it works for something that they're working on. You really don't know what they're doing unless you know. The only time I recommend going up to a lifter and telling them that their lifts look like shit if they're your training partner. That person, you can tell them anything. This type of lifter is usually giving common fixes to beginner lifters that they don't exactly know what that beginner lifter is working on. I know sometimes in my own comments, I will see people prescribing or suggesting weightlifting shoes to lifters with their squat when there are like 80 different things that that lifter could fix before investing in a pair of lifting shoes. Obviously, I'm coming from the perspective of a coach who has more insight and more experience giving advice to people, but also usually people ask me for that advice. So yeah, I would just recommend against doing that, um, not only based on what you may not know about this individual, but also because it's kind of a creepy and weird thing to approach someone else in the gym, a physical space that a lot of people feel uncomfortable in already, and just let them know that, hey, I've been watching your workout and you suck. Obviously, you're probably not gonna say it to them like that, but it is a sensitive environment that you want to keep in mind that maybe it took that person everything just to show up or it took them years just to even sign up for that gym membership. So just be sensitive when you're thinking about 
giving unsolicited advice, I 100% recommend against it. If you absolutely need to or feel like someone is in danger, it might be a good idea to make sure that you are doing the same or similar exercise around the same vicinity that that person is so that you can kind of teach them. Now, again, it might not work, um, but I would just avoid being a novice plus douche and yeah. My last note on that is if you really, really want to give someone advice or whatever, become their friend. Find any way to become their friend, ask them for a spot, that's the easiest way to make a friend in the gym, and just talk to them. Uh, you don't have to talk to them about their form or what they're doing wrong. Try to know the people in your gym so that you can promote an environment that is conducive to helping people and making friends in the gym. <laughs> that's why I'm here, my strong, strong friend. Okay, and my last piece of advice, last mistake that I definitely 100% made is wearing equipment wrong. Some of the most common things that I see is people wearing their belt too tight. For me, it was so exciting when I was cutting to get on the lowest, tightest rung of my Inzer belt, and boy, was that a mistake. <clears throat> I could not properly use my belt in that position. The point of using a belt is to expand your core and breathe into it so that it is tight and you have your intra-abdominal pressure and you're getting the most out of it. You can't get intra-abdominal pressure when you are constricting yourself and you look like Kim Kardashian at the Met Gala. <laughs> all right, you guys, I think that is all for my tips. I hope that this was helpful for you. I hope that it wasn't too preachy. I definitely don't wanna seem like holier than thou. I'm just here to help out and hopefully give you some tips as you're in an exciting part of your fitness journey, but also sometimes confusing part of your fitness journey. I hope that this helps and points you in the right direction. There's so many free resources out there. I have a ton of them on my channel. I'll also link a couple of more of the free programs that I recommended. And of course I have Stronger by the Day, which is only $8 a month. If you liked listening to me and you know, you like the vibes that I'm giving you, of course, I have my program, Stronger by the Day. It's only $8 a month if you're interested in that. It is programmed for all strength levels. I currently run it and we have some more Novice Plus or Novice Lifters on there making some accommodations to the program. It's great for everyone and it's just been a blast. Uh, we're currently in the middle of a pull-up challenge. So if you wanna get in while we're still working on pull-ups, I recommend you join right this instant. All right, you guys, make sure to subscribe if you're not already and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I do wanna start making more beginner level tutorials or beginner friendly videos. So let me know what you wanna see in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.